Hi friends, uh, welcome to the discussion. This is a theme 2 of uh, class 12 Ancient India. So the period we are referring to in this chapter is 600 BC to 600 CE. Okay, so that is the period we are uh, referring to. So the topics discussed are the, the emergence of states, the new states in ancient India with the expansion of agriculture the control over land was necessary so that's how the new political organizations called states emerged and as a consequences there emerged the mahajanapadas we will learn about all those and how this agricultural expansion was facilitated with the adoption of new technology so with that agriculture prosperity the trade increased the control over land became crucial so that's how the development of state happened so the period we are referring to is 600 bc to 600 ce and there were several developments in the different parts of the subcontinent during the long span of 1500 years following the end of harappan civilization so uh, the period we are referring to is 600 bc the rigvedic the early vedic age started around 1500 uh, bc so uh, there were say gap of uh, some 1500 years since the Harappan civilization came to an end. So in this gap, Rig Veda was composed and we can see the evidence of pastoral population in the Deccan and further south. Uh, then the expansion of agriculture happened. Uh, use of iron came into existence. Okay, that was an important change as far as technology is concerned so before that what we had was the bronze age now the iron age of indian history emerged from 6th century bc there is evidence that there were other trends as well like the emergence of early states empires and kingdoms so these political process along with agricultural production and technology change bring in uh, so much development and advancement in culture so this is what we will see in this chapter so the uh, unit uh, start with the discuss discussion on a uh, james princip so he was the one who deciphered the brahmi and karosti script so these scripts were used by ashoka in his uh, inscriptions so that's how he deciphered the word uh, Piyadasi. Piyadasi means pleasant to behold. Okay. Is the dasa of the or somebody is likened by the others. So James Princip was the uh, individual or the offi officer of the East India Company who deciphered Brahmi and Karosti script. And uh, this uh, deciphering of script led to many intellectual development indian scholars used inscriptions and text composed in variety of languages to reconstruct india's past so this approach was begun on the side column the meaning of inscription is given and it also mentions about the prakrit language in which the earliest inscriptions were made so so that the ordinary people could understand those inscriptions and uh, coming to the earliest states, there were 16 Mahajanapadas. The 6th century BC is often regarded as a major turning point in early Indian history because it is an era associated with early states, cities and growing use of iron and development of coinage. So these four features can be constructed as an MCQ. Okay, So uh, all of these features emerge during 6th century BC. Along with that, growth of diverse systems of thought like Buddhism and Jainism also emerged in this time. So we will learn more about in the fourth chapter. Uh, although the list vary, some important Mahajanabhadas were Vaji, Magadha, Koshala, Kuru, Panchala, Gandhara and Avanti. And while most Mahajanabhadas were ruled by kings uh, known as Ganas or Sanghas, uh, were some oligarchies who uh, who controlled certain Mahajanapadas. Most Mahajanapadas were ruled by kings, but uh, some like Vaji were ruled by Sangha. So Sangha or Gana 
were oligarchies that means the power was shared by a number of men often collectively called rajas and rajas probably controlled resources such as land collectively in this vaji sangha or some other uh, uh, mahajanapadas where the where oligarchies controlled the resources each mahajanapada had a cap capital city which was often fortified okay to prevent external attacks fortification was a norm during those times and maintaining fortified cities as well as providing for incipient armies and bureaucracies required resources so how did they raised resources before that the given map shows early states and their capital of uh, this is gandhara uh, surasena avanti is there magadha vaji anga etc koshala okay so uh, brahmanas so it is in this times that 6th century bc is that the brahmanas began composing sanskrit text known as dharma sutras so dharma sutras are basically the brahmanical conception of social life uh, so they it sets norms for rulers who are, who are who should rule in what ways what should be the interrelationship between different uh, uh, segments of the population and rulers were advised to collect taxes tribute from cultivators traders and artisans and uh, kshatriyas were the groups who were expected to be the rulers according to the varna system devised by brahmans what we do know is that raid on neighboring state were recognized as a legitimate means of acquiring wealth so think of the raid conducted by muhammad ghasni uh, on somnath temple so basically it should not be viewed through the lens of communalism it was a norm of those times that uh, attacking and looting uh, the wealth of other states to enrich one's own state was a norm then back so uh, gradually some states acquired standing army and maintained a regular bureaucracies so this this was the uh, the things like in the 6th century and the first among the 16 was the magadha magadha was the most important mahajanapada it became the most powerful because of certain factors because the agriculture was especially productive because it has the fertile land of ganga okay then closeness to iron mines just think about the present day jharkhand then it provided resources for tools and weapons because with iron they could uh, make implements and the uh, the swords for war etc the elephant an important component of the army were found in forest in the region also the ganga and its tributaries provided a means of cheap and convenient communication so these were the factors that made magadha one of the prominent uh, mahajanapada so uh, initially rajagaha or rajgir was the capital of magadha later the capital was shifted to pataliputra okay so it is about information about magadha and the magadha later developed into the mauryan empire under chandragupta maurya who founded the empire in 321 bc and how we get to know about maurya uh, from the work of magasthanis who wrote the indika and arthashastra by kautilya or uh, chanakya and also the ashokas inscriptions give information about the role of mauryas and the ashokan inscriptions were in prakrit language but in the northwest of subcontinent it was in aramaic and greek these the scripts used were brahmi script and in northwest sometime it was written in kharosthi okay also the aramaic and greek scripts were used for inscription in afghanistan so this is the basic uh, idea about the mauryan empire and its inscriptions then how the uh, the empire was administered there were five major political centers the one being the capital pataliputra and other four are taxila 
Ujjaini, Tosali and Suvarnagiri. And when we uh, examine the content of the inscriptions laid by kings, we find virtually the same message engraved everywhere. The, uh, the ultimate content was similar. So what does it indicate? Does it indicate that a uniform administrative system was in place? So historians have increasingly come to realize that this is unlikely because the regions included within the empire were just too diverse. So it is unlikely that the administrative structures were uniform. So uh, the above given uh, gives the map of or the distribution of e rock edicts and stupas. Okay, you can see uh, certain major rock edicts in Kandahar, Shabazgari, Kalsi, Girnar, Sopara, Sanadi, etc. But minor rock edicts has a concentration in the south, that's especially in the Andhra region. Then pillar inscription, we can find a concentration around here. Okay, so that with that, we can guess certain questions. Uh, then uh, coming to how the Ashoka uh, tried to hold his empire through propagating Dhamma. Okay, we have seen what do you mean by Dhamma in classics NCRT. Uh, Megasthenes has mentions about, he gives the account about the uh, how the military was coordinated. It was coordinated with a committee with six uh, subcommittees to look after each minute details which is required to maintain a long army. And how important was the empire? Okay, uh, many historians found that message on Ashogan inscriptions were very different from that of most other rulers, suggesting that Ashoka was more powerful and industrious, more humble than later rulers who adopted grandiose titles. So it is, uh, so uh, it was a different uh, empire. And coming to uh, the next uh, section, the new notions of kingship emerged in the south. For example, in the chiefdom of uh, Chola, Chera, Pandya, they formed the Tamilaga, the ancient Tamil country. They proved to be stable and prosperous. So, these chief and chief kingdom, what do you mean by these chiefs? Chiefs is a powerful man whose position may or may not be hereditary may not be hereditary and his functions include performing special rituals leadership in warfare and arbitrating disputes there are no regular armies and officials in chiefdom and uh, what was his uh, sources of wealth he received gift from his subordinates and it is distributed among his supporters so it was not like a usual king. That's why it's, it's, it is called chiefs or chiefdoms. And Tamil Sangam text mentions or give details about such uh, uh, rulers in the south. Many kings including Shadavahanas who ruled over western and central India. Shadavahana ruled western and, western and uh, central India. And then there is Shakas of Central Asian origin who established kingdoms in the northwest of and western parts of the subcontinent. So they got their revenue from long distance trade. Okay, chiefdom of the south received a gift as a source of wealth. Here the Shakas obtained their revenues from long distance trade. So, control of trade was an important source of revenue. And how did they rule? They tried to attach divinity to their rule by adopting various titles. They started identifying with a variety of deities. The strategy is best exemplified by Kushans of 1st century BC to 1st century CE. And they had their kingdom extending from Central Asia to Northwest India. Kushans considered themselves godlike and 
adopted the title devaputra so it, this devaputra title is associated with kushana rulers uh, then it mentions about the samanda system so samandas were military men we have already seen in this earlier uh, ncert of class 6 and they offered homage and provided military support to rulers similar to the mansabdari system of the mughals and we get to know about these kings through the prashastis composed for example in the uh, alahabad inscription it has the prashasti by harisena about the samudra gupta so that is the prayaga prashasti at the alahabad pillar in sanskrit composed by harisena so uh, these are the sources that gives information about the earliest kings and what was the popular perception of kings for example the stories like jatakas and panchatantra give some ideas uh, but ordinary people rarely left accounts of their thoughts and experience so a complete picture cannot be obtained jatakas were written in pali so remember that jatakas were written in pali the one story known as ganda dindu jataka describes the plight of the subjects of a wicked king so this is how we get to know about the rulers of those times and the books in the side mentions about sudarshana lake and its repair ring by rudra daman who was a shaga ruler in the second century ce he got the lake repaired using his own resources without imposing any tax on his subject so that was a kind thing to do in those times even in today's uh, uh, standards that was a huge thing to do to take uh, money out of one's pocket and spend it for the public so uh, what were the strategies adopted to increase production so we have already seen that agricultural expansion was one of the reasons why the new states emerged because the land became an important thing to be controlled and shift to plow agriculture improved the uh, productivity of agricultural practices also introduction of transplantation so that helped the plant to grow and uh, and also the use of iron plow share helped to make the soil more suitable for agriculture and in areas uh, semi arid areas like punjab haryana the expansion on use of irrigation was attempted and there was the ho agriculture these are the say, some techniques adopted to improve agricultural productivity so the there was an increasing differentiation among the people engaged in agriculture for example there were uh, landless agriculture laborers small peasants large landholders etc so gahapadi is the term used to represent small peasants and large landholders the village headman uh, as well as the large landholders emerged as powerful figures coming to south the land the large land owners are known as vellalar okay then uh, the plowmen as ujavar so these words we can still see they are in use even now and the slaves as adimai okay differential access to land labor and some of the new technologies became the norm of the time so differentiation of rural population happened so the box mentions about gahapati so you can read on your own what do you mean by gahapati land grants and the emergence of new elites was another feature land grants were given by king to brahmanas mostly religious institutions and brahmans so uh, copper plates were used in which inscriptions were made about these grants most inscriptions were in sanskrit and uh, one of the record also talks about prabhavadi gupta he was the one of the was the daughter of one of the most important rulers in indian history that is chandragupta 2 in the 4th to 5th century the vakatakas who were powerful uh, uh, in the deccan it was the uh, she was married to vakataka family 
അക്കോർഡിംഗ് ടു സാൻസ്ക്രിപ്റ്റ് ലീഗൽ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് വുമൻ വി ആർ നോട്ട് സപ്പോസ് ടു ഹാവ് ഇൻഡിപെൻഡൻറ്റ് ആക്സസ് ടു റിസോഴ്സസ് സച്ച് ആസ് ലാൻഡ് ബട്ട് യെറ്റ് ദർ ഈസ് ആൻ എക്സെപ്ഷൻ എക്സെപ്ഷൻസ് ലൈക്ക് പ്രഭാപതി ഗുപ്ത ഹു ഗേവ് ഹു ഹാഡ് ആക്സസ് ടു ലാൻഡ് വിച്ച് ഇ ദെൻ ഗ്രാൻഡഡ് ടു ബ്രാഹ്മൺസ് ലാൻഡ് ഗ്രാൻഡ് had certain regional variations in the size of the land donated uh, ranging from small port plots to vast stretches of uncultivated land and the rights given to donees deferred land grants were why land grants were given it was a part of a strategy adopted by ruling classes to extend agriculture to new area so this can be part of an mcq in which you uh, they can ask which among the following reasons uh, or which among the following could be the reasons of land grants so one reason was extending agriculture to new areas or it is a symbol of weakening political power so when grants are made the king could gain the confidence and support of important people it was also said that uh, since kings were losing control they wanted to present at least a record of their power so that's why this uh, the land was given so land grant provides some insight into the relationship between cultivators and the state okay then what was the uh, towns and trade so the major uh, towns were pataliputra ujjain puhar madura etc and uh, the urban population had elites and craft person the important uh, artifacts included northern black polished ware then wide range of uh, items are mentioned just read on your own then this is the area in which many kingdoms ruled kushanas in the taxila region then guptas shagas vakatakas shadavahana and cholas in the south okay this location should be remembered so that uh, you need to remember this order as well chola chera and pandya okay you will be able to do many questions with this the idea of locations of different dynasties and by the second century we find short votive inscriptions in a number of cities and there were also sreenis or guild the guild system of ancient times is known as sreenis okay they procured raw material regulated production and marketed the finished product so by the second century sreenis were there and there were also a subcontinent uh, uh, a trade relationship within the subcontinent as well as with the western parts of the world and successful merchants were designated as masattuvan in tamil and sethis and Sattavahas in Prakrit. Important items of trade include pepper, textile and medicinal plants. And it was also, uh, in order to facilitate trade, the kings issued uh, coins on their own. So that was another important feature of this uh, period. Punch marked coins made of silver and copper were among the earliest to be minted and used. it was also it is also likely that merchants bankers and town people issued some of these coins kushans were issued the largest hoards of gold coin in the first century c the widespread use of gold coins indicate that the enormous value of the transaction that were taking place coins were also issued by tribal republics such as yaudeyas of punjab and haryana you, you need to remember this name yaudeyas so they are tribal republics who issued copper coins okay so this is the punch marked uh, coin this is the coins of yaudeyas and in some of the most spectacular gold coins were issued by gupta rulers so uh, some suggest that with the collapse of the western roman empire long distance trade declined and this affected the prosperity of the states so decline in the trade resulted in decline of the wealth of states okay so uh, now the next sections 
are not so uh, relevant because it talks about how uh, deciphering of inscriptions are done. Uh, you don't have much to learn from there. You, if you are interested, you can uh, read on your own. So at the end, a timeline of different of de developments are given. So you should have that timeline in your mind to solve problems. So just go through this. What all things happened in this uh, 1200 years. Okay. So this is all about this discussion. Thank you.